Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we autopsy the 144 million watt iPhone. Hi there guys and welcome to the Geek Group. I'm Chris Bowden and today we're doing a second part video to follow up our iPhone detonation thing. We had uh, John sent us an iPhone, here it is. This is a first generation iPhone and you can see it's had a bit of distress. It's been put through Thumper twice. So it's uh, even, yeah, it's, it's pretty well fried. So I wanted, after we ran it to Thumper, um, I wanted to autopsy it and show you guys what it looks like. So I have, if I can find it, I have my super, super macro zooming ceiling cam here. And let's get a look at the back. You can see that's where the electricity went in on the second blast over by the camera. On the first blast, that was our art contact point. And right there. Just save that as a screenshot. All you Mac guys out there, there's, there's your wallpaper right there. Okay. So we go down to the other end and it's just, it's wrecked. It's <laughs> you can see uh, there's, I'll grab a pointy thing. There's definitely been, that's a contact point for an arc. There's some splatter over here. We blew the bottom of the thing right off. Um, if we look on the front, we had to use, because the bottom was made out of plastic, we had to use a trigger wire, and this is aluminum spatter from the trigger wire that is, that's, that's permanently embedded in the phone. That's, that's forever now. And then there's just a lot of broken glass. So some more spatter up here. It's, it's a wreck. It's pretty cool. So let's dig into it and see what we can see. I've never messed with an iPhone before because I'm an Android guy. I like my Android phone, so I don't know much about these. This is the first time I've ever seen inside of one. So this is as much an adventure for me as it is for many of you. I think we're just going to begin by prying our way right into the outer shell, though. It's in amazingly good shape for what it's been through. We've, we've done cell phones before. Hard drives tend to survive pretty well, but cell phones just eat it. Cell phones tend to disintegrate. I got to give the iPhone credit. It's still mostly in one piece. And I don't know that there's any easy way to, I, I'm pretty sure the case just snaps on. And we've, we've wrecked that pretty good. So I'm just going to work my way around. There we go. I've got a lead here. There we go. Oh, that helped a lot. Okay. I'm just peeling things apart. A lot of fun smells. It's, it's got a cross between a locker room and a house fire. It's, <laughs> it's definitely got some interesting things happening here. There, okay. That gets our back cover off. And our pretty Apple Lord. Oh, hey, I wonder if I can do this. Too big. There, I've got the Apple logo out of the back. And there, there's your Apple logo. 144 million watt Apple logo. <laughs> I'm gonna set that aside because I'm pretty sure there's a viewer out there who is going to be jumping up and down saying, I'll give you 50 bucks for that. Uh -huh. um, oh, by the way, I want to thank Kevin Harbour from Oregon who donated a set of Exolite screwdrivers. These came in the mail um, after our last series of autopsy videos. I mentioned I needed a, a good set and Kevin was kind enough to donate these. So thank you, Kevin. That's really awesome. Feel free to send us more goodies. I'm going to stick that back there. So thank you, Kevin. I'm going to use your screwdrivers in this video right now. Let's start with this one. Oh, they got all different sizes. They're very nice. And we have been quietly collecting more tools specifically for the autopsy videos. And we're working on building the new autopsy set. So there's, there's a lot going on here at the lab that you guys haven't seen. If you watch the Captain's Blog videos, that's our secret channel that nobody knows about. Um, if, you, if you watch our Captain's Blog videos, that's, it's my personal YouTube channel. And I carry... Yeah, a lot of people have noticed I carry a little pouch on my hip, and that's a holster with uh, a small 
really basic pocket camera. And I shoot, on average, I shoot a video a day. I didn't shoot one yesterday because it, it depends on what's going on. Not every day do we have something that's really worthy of a video. But on days when you know, it's worth a video, I'll, I'll shoot it and it goes up on there. So typical daily videos. And it's just a blog of what we're doing, what's going on around the lab. It's uh, definitely an R-rated thing because I don't censor myself on my personal channel just because it annoys the board. And every now and then I have to do something to, you know, exhibit my teenage rebellion. So be aware of that if you're watching it and, you know, you have your kids or your parents around. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, it's just what's going on. A lot of it's pretty boring, like uh, the most recent, you know, the, the recent threads in there have been like, hey, we're fixing the diesel tank on the truck. It's, it's really, unless you're a very serious Geek Root fan, most people aren't really going to care about it at all. But for those of you that care, I like to give you something to watch. And we don't do production videos every day. Not yet. We will be. We're working on that. We try to get production videos out every couple days. I don't want to use these for pry bars. They're too nice. If you watch the autopsy videos, I have a long history of trashing small screwdrivers by using them as pry bars. which is a pain because I, I actually have a set of micro pry bars, but they're too big for a lot of the stuff that I work on on the autopsy videos. There's a lot of glue involved in an iPhone, I'm learning. Now, the last time we got into an Apple product, it caught on fire. So forgive me if I'm a little wary and working around this battery. They puncture really easily because they're not designed to have some crazy guy. Hey, you know what worked for this? I actually do have a mini pry bar. Buried in my pocket, I have keys to the space shuttle. Ah, there we go. Gerber Ninja with the Gerber artifact. Here's, here's the Gerber artifact. 10 bucks. They are awesome and everybody should have one. I use this thing all the time. I don't use it in the videos very much, but I do use it all the time. And Gerber, if you're watching, you should be a sponsor of this video. Ah, there. All right, here's our battery, which is completely pooched. Where's my camera? It's over here. I keep, I get lost with the camera. There we go. There's our battery and it's pooched. A little bit of scorching on there. A lot of scorching on the back. So there's your first gen iPhone battery. Where's my burn barrel? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, that's safe. Now we're, I'm gonna keep my artifact out because we might need that again. Now let's dig into the rest of it. There really, it's, there's a brain right here, that module. And you can see that that's where a SIM or something goes. Yeah, it's definitely a SIM slot. It's just all banged up because I bent everything around. But here, I'll put those back there. That's OK. There's our SIM slot right there. Let's look into this and see if we can dig down further into it. I don't really think we can. I think it's just a little tiny thing with a bunch of SMT on it. But I'll carve into it and see what I can see. A lot of RF shielding. People surprisingly often forget that cell phones are really just computer digital radio transmitters and receivers. It's, it's no different than a pocket radio with a computer hooked to it. So most of the stuff in a cell phone revolves around transmitting and receiving radio. I think that's got a second layer to it. All right, this is kind of cool. If you look at it on edge, there's like multiple layers. You can see the stuff up on top. We can get a really good look here. Some Samsung chips, a lot of SMT. Now it's a cell phone, so I mean this is, you know, bang for the buck as far as parts density. It's about as high as you can possibly get because they're trying to cram a whole lot of smarts in a little tiny phone. And there's all your chip IDs, so you guys at home can research those. Go to findchips.com and you can learn about what all those chips are. 
That's pretty cool. This is really neat. This is, I've never taken apart an iPhone before. I've never owned an iPhone, so. Thank you, sir, for sending your phone in. And it was cool. We had a gentleman sent a phone in, and he specifically mentioned he'd like to see us run it through Thumper. And if you have something at home, like a cell phone or something interesting, it can't just be like, you know, your sister's hamster or something. It has to be something cool. But if you have something that you want to send in and have us run through Thumper and make a video of it, let me know. Because if you've got a good idea, we'll have you send it in and we'll blow it up for you. And we'll blow it up, we'll make a video, and we'll talk about, oh wow, look at this, look at this. Here, I pried in there. I told you it looked like multiple layers, and it is. There's, there's a, like a daughter board arrangement there. We'll peel that off, now look inside. Really big chip with an apple on it. Hey, who'd have thought? There's your big chip. Okay. And then there's, this is the other side of that, which has the sockets, which is like a surface mount socket. So there's our, our old top board. We had it like this last time we saw it. And now we have that one. And I don't know if it'll show up on the finished render, but here, I'll put it right in the middle of the apple. If you look right in the center of the apple, there's a pixel that's stuck on. And that actually happened, the, the camera we used for the overhead camera was, originally it was our only camera. It was, it's all we had. And we used it for shooting, if you've seen the Thumper promo video, the old one, from like 2008, I think it was. Um, there's really, really good slow motion video of Thumper in there. And that was shot with that camera. And the camera, well, ate it pretty much. It was too close to some thumper blasts and those did bad things to the camera. So one of the things is a stuck pixel. Another thing is the fact that there are little tiny pieces of copper embedded in the lens of the camera. We'll, do, we'll show that in a video one of these days. But this is the screen which is a, from the looks of it a capacitive touch screen. And there's a lot of glass involved. So there's our capacitive touch screen and there's goop. It's slimy. Here. You can see the sliminess. Look at that. Inside your iPhone, it's slimy. That or this, somebody drops this in a toilet or something at some point. So there's our screen. I'm just going to throw that away because I really don't want to touch it. And then it's a screen. It's a little computer, and that's just about it. There's some stuff at the bottom here. Let's dig into this. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. This is all just plastic bezel. No, that's, that's metal. That's, that's definitely metal. Tough metal at that. All right, let's see what we got down here. More metal. I gotta give them credit. iPhones are amazingly tough for what they are. I mean, this is it's one of the most ruggedly built cell phones I've ever been into. There's your speaker down in the bottom. Okay, that's the, the speaker. Yeah, there's really nothing else in here. It's just plastic and some various little charred bits. I can't really identify a lot of stuff because it's so burned. Ah, there's the speaker. That's, yeah, that's a speaker. Okay. So there's the other bit to your audio. But yep, there's our look inside. And you can see there's scorch marks all the way down inside it. Like it, it went right to the core. I'm sure I'm missing quite a bit. This wasn't a very good equipment autopsy because, well, you know, it's, we blew the hell out of it. So here's inside, you can see a good look there. That's the outside of the case from there. There's the inside of the case, all the scorch marks. It's really awesome. So, you guys have fun. I wanna thank you for watching, and uh, if, I don't know, we'll do some kind of contest and somebody will win this in the future. If you really want it, send us an email, let me know. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group, and that's our equipment autopsy of a first generation Apple iPhone that has had 1,800 volts at 80,000 amps for 144 million watts of energy dumped through it. So that's the most high power iPhone in the history of the world. You guys have fun. This is The Geek Group. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and learn more about us at thegeekgroup.org. We'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation.
This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.